And so the question here is the same. Who created the friends? God. Who created this man born and now he can't hear or speak? God. To whom do they all belong? God. These people belong to the same God. They're part of the same family. They're part of the same brokenness as a Syrophoenician woman and her daughter. And they bring, Jesus, they bring to Jesus this man and place him in front of him. And Jesus, it says, doesn't want anybody to see this. So he picks him up, he takes him to a different part of the house, and he just merely says, be open. And uh, there's some things in here that go on, you know. Um, he puts his fingers in his ears, and he spits and touches his tongue. Uh, some of that we can maybe do, but some of it's a little bit gross. But that's how God acts. God acts the way God needs to in order to be God to the people who are broken and need to be brought back together. And in that moment, human brokenness is overcome by the fullness of God. And so we have these two stories, great stories of hope and life. A mother whose love for her daughter is so great she risks ridicule and expulsion from a house. A man whose brokenness is so deep that his friends scoop him up and plop him in front of Jesus and says, Dare you to step over that one? And in both those cases, God acts the way God needs to for his people, for you. These are not just stories that happened way back then. These are stories who continue to live into the present, where we can come to God and you can come to God with the same plea that this mother had. Take care of my loved one. Take care of my friend. Be a part of healing as only you can. And you see, that's where people are pushing this, is that, is that they're coming for healing. They know their brokenness. I know my sin. It is ever before me. In fact, I shave this face, as my father once said, so I know what's going on. And in those moments where I feel the most broken and I see a world that's broken, I remember these stories about how Gentiles, people like us, can step forward and God stands ready to embrace with healing grace. And Jesus acts in the history of humanity from start to finish, from creation to redemption, from death into life. He acts in order that those who God created those who belong to God through that creation are fully God's through the death and resurrection yet to come, but yet the resurrection which we've witnessed. And in those moments, Jesus acts. Now comes a great conundrum for us as we read through this. And some people, I think, understand this portion really well because they step right back into that history and they hear it as Jesus uh, orders them to tell no one about what has happened. Don't tell anybody that I unstopped his ears. Don't tell anybody that I loosened his tongue. Don't tell anybody that his speech is clear. And the more he tells them not to talk, the more they talk. Well, we've got that first part down about being silent in this day and age. Silence is golden, we're told. But no, it's not. We are not of that people. We have loosed tongues, ears that are open to hear the word of God speech that is clear about the love of God because we are God's. And this text today isn't just about Jesus moving into a ministry with Gentiles. It's about how God's love manifests itself for the whole of his creation. It's no longer just Jews. It's Jew and Gentile. It's no longer just the religious hierarchy. It's the religious hierarchy and the brokenness of the broken of all broken people. It's not just about people who think they're in. It is about and for the people who think they are out. This is a gospel in which God says, you are all in. Because truth be told, every Jewish person sitting around watching that woman come in and talk about her daughter 
was just as broken as she, just as in need of a redeemer as she, just as lamenting the brokenness and trying to find healing as she. And turning as they went by way out of into Zidon, Zidon towards Galilee and then into the Decapolis, Jesus meets other broken people. And the story is simple, that faithful people bring broken people to God and they say, he'll fix you. But we're silent about that when we shouldn't be. And Jesus says that the more he talked and told them not to, the more they proselytized, the more they proclaimed beyond belief what Jesus had done. And it says they were astounded by measure. Uh, they were astounded beyond measure. They couldn't grasp what Jesus had done. Can you grasp the magnitude of God's love for you? That in your brokenness, whatever you think is your sin, however bad it may be, the, the, the thought that you think you, you're further from God than anybody else, you stand next to a people who are astounded beyond belief. They can't believe that God has acted for them. But that's the gospel. God acts for each and every one of you. God comes in order that when you come to him for healing, you might find it. You might find relief from evil spirits that are bogging you down. And you may find relief when your ears are stopped from the word of God. When your tongue is loose and you can't praise God, he unstops your ears and loosens your tongue and gives you the word of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Why? Because when you come for healing, you get it. And this is the amazement of the people. They say, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. You've come to the church in which God is present. You've come to the church to hear God's holy word, to be nourished at his table. You've come to the church to be refreshed for your life. Now, know that there are people who are coming to you for healing. They're looking to you to find that which you take out of here. This is the moment in which those who have been deaf and mute can now hear and speak. You're the speakers. May Christ go with you and may you speak the awesomeness of God into the world of broken people who stand in need of healing as well. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to rise and join your voices together as we sing the hymn of praise, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs>